Hello YouTube and welcome to Shocked Up. I'm your host Andres and today we'll be learning how to build a Tesla coil. Now before you try and skip ahead to the build, I'm just going to stop you right there because this video is strictly for the build and another video will be posted shortly describing what we're doing and how it works. So let's get down to nitty gritty, let's get started. So this is all the parts that we'll be needing to create this build. We got our paper towel roll, just a cardboard part, some magnet wire, I'm using 26 gauge, some electrical tape, some rubber coated just regular wire, a power MOSFET, I'm using an IRF P250, but you can use any similar rated MOSFET, this one's 200 volts and 30 amps, a one kilo ohm trim potentiometer, a 50 ohm resistor. Now I can't get my hands on an exactly 50 ohm resistor, but I got 51 ohms from the store. It doesn't make much of a difference. A one microfarad capacitor. And that's everything will be needed to complete this build. So if you need to take a trip to the parts store, you can do that now. And also the parts list is also in the description below. So first we'll start off with winding our secondary coil. We'll start off by leaving a bunch left over so we have some room to play with after we're done winding it and then to connect it to the circuit. So one trick I like to do is just shove some of the extra wire in so then it's out of our way when we start winding and then just tape it down. Get that more into the shot. Just tape that down there. And now we're gonna begin our 400 turns. Remember to keep all turns tight and side by side. And now we're gonna start winding. Oop. There you go, one turn, two turns, and well, so forth. You get the idea. And here we have our beautiful winded coil, 400 turns. Notice how I've taped the bottom and the top so that it doesn't unwind on me, and it gives it a nice finish too. And notice how I also I left some on the top. This is where our sparks are going to be coming from. And at the bottom we have a nice amount of wire so then we can connect it to our circuit. So let's get to building the circuit. So now we have our breadboard which we're going to be building our circuit on. So I just have my full bridge rectifier here so I can connect a transformer so I can supply the power to the circuit. So I'll just leave that there. So first we're going to start off by connecting our one microfarad capacitor. One, to the, one side to the positive rails and one side to the negative rail. And it doesn't matter for this build because I'm using a ceramic capacitor which side the positive and negative are on. But if you're using an electrolytic capacitor like this one, then you're going to want to make sure that you're connecting it the right way. As you can see, the short end is where the negative goes. So don't mix that up because you can have some bad smelling gases coming out of this. So I'm just going to drop in my one kilo ohm tremor potentiometer. Just going to place that somewhere on the board like that. And I have my 51 ohm resistor. So I'm going to connect that to one side of the trim potentiometer and the other side to the positive rail like this. Then the other side of the trim potentiometer is going to get connected to ground like that. I can't get that in. There we go. And here we have our power MOSFET. So this one and many other MOSFETs, it goes gate, drain, source. So that's how we're going to be connecting it to our circuit. So I just recommend before, if you're using a different one, just look up the data sheet online so you avoid any confusion there, but it should be the same for most. So the gate of our MOSFET is going to connect to the center tap of the trim potentiometer. So that's going to go in there, a little bit of a tight fit there. And the source of our MOSFET is going to get connected to ground like that. So now also connected to the gate of our power MOSFET is the long end of the coil that we just wound. So just going to plug that in there. Yep. And now in the drain of our MOSFET, which is the center pin, I'm going to connect a little bit of extra wire and then 
this wire, is, our primary wire is going to get connected to that. So one side of the primary wire is going to connect to there, and the other one is going to connect to our positive rail. And then it's just going to go over the primary, over the secondary coil, sorry, just like that. And now we're ready to power it up. And here we go, we have our circuit. Now our build is done, pretty much. So one note I'd like to make is um, make sure to have enough electrical tape around the, the secondary coil because you don't want to have the primary coil t touching directly against the secondary because it could arc and melt the rubber and then you your entire build is ruined. This beautiful coil will be done. So just keep that in mind, insulate it and you'll be fine. So here I have my transformer which I'll be using to power my circuit. So uh, this transformer pushes out around 30 volts. This circuit will work for around 20 to 30 volts. So that's something you should keep in mind when looking for a power supply. So now, before we go ahead and hook it up, we're just gonna turn this trim potentiometer all the way to the right. That way it won't overload the circuit. So now we're gonna connect this on and we're gonna slowly turn this until we see that blue spark. And you can kind of adjust it, just eyeball it, until you get the biggest spark possible. And let's kill the lights. And you can see that a little better. And it is working beautifully. Our hard work finally paid off. So now just some side notes. If you manage to turn the trim potentiometer all the way to the left and nothing happened, then your main problem is probably that this coil just needs to be flipped. So you'll just reverse these two or just flip it on the coil. Either one will work just fine. Another point to make is make sure to put a heat sink on your power MOSFET because it gets very hot while in operation. So put a heat sink on with some good thermal paste to dissipate the heat. And then you can put this on some perf board and make it look awesome. Well, that's everything for today. We hope you've liked this build and stay tuned for a detailed explanation coming to you shortly. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video and follow us on Instagram so you're the first to know when new content is released. The link will be in the description below and we will see you next time.